Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. Today we're going over the Full Speed Bat 100. This is a one cell powered brushless micro and it has basically all the same things its larger brethren has, most notably an F3 flight controller, FPV setup, ESCs, the whole nine yards. I've flown a few brushed micros in the past and they were pretty fun, but I just was never really satisfied with the way that they performed. So it will be interesting to see how the bat compares to comparable micros with brushed motors like the QX100 or LT105. For the bat 100, GearBest only offers a plug and play version, so you're going to have to use your own receiver. But just in case you're looking for a bind and fly, other stores do offer the BNF with your typical receivers like FlySky, DSMX, and FRSky. When you first take it out of the box, I think you'll definitely notice how light it is. This thing is incredibly light. Let's see how much it weighs. And let's see how much each prop weighs. And the battery. The frame on this thing is super thin. I measured the bottom plate and it came out to be 1.5 millimeters thick and the top plate was just 1 millimeter. Normally I would like to have at least 2 millimeters for the bottom plate but because the total weight of the BAT100 is so low I would think it would be able to handle light speed crashes just fine. Just keep in mind nothing is unbreakable. I still think if you're if you hit something at full speed especially if you hit it at an angle where one of the arms takes the brunt of the impact. I think it will still snap. The micro arrives fully built and is FPV ready. You just need to install your own receiver, which is very easy to do. If you've ever soldered anything before, you should be fine. The pads have plenty of room in between each other, so it's almost hard to mess up. Depending on your receiver, you'll either use the 5 volt or 3.3 volt pads, and then there is the ground and signal, which would be the same for most, if not all, receivers. Alright, so let's go over some of the hardware starting with the camera. Seated on a 3D printed mount using some double sided tape at about a 20 degree angle is a 600 TVL CMOS camera that is switchable between NTSC and PAL video modes. The 25 milliwatt VTX with dipole antenna is attached to the back of the camera and supports up to 48 channels. The camera does move around a little bit so you might want to reapply with some stronger double sided tape or maybe use some hot glue so it doesn't move around otherwise you may experience some jello in your video and nobody wants that. The picture quality was decent, it's about what you would expect out of a micro CMOS camera. Not the best when it comes to detail but that's really what you would expect out of these cameras at least from all the micros that I've tested. The picture was bright but then again it was sunny out. As far as the 25 milliwatt VTX goes, the reception was actually really good. Even with obstructions in the way, I noticed very little noise. And this was from me flying from inside the house. I did change the OSD readouts from what it came with stock. It was just a little too cluttered. Things like artificial horizon. At first I thought it was cool having these lines moving with your quad. It kind of makes you feel like you're in a cockpit. But in all honesty, it's more of a distraction than anything. I mean, it's slow to react to your stick movements, it's really just not ideal for mini or micro drones. Your attention should be more focused on not crashing, and depending on where you're flying, you normally don't have that much time to be looking around at different readouts. Sometimes even a quick glance can get you in trouble and cause you to crash. There are no metal screws here, the BAT100 uses all plastic screws and standoffs to keep the weight down to an absolute minimum. With the top plate off, you have access to the Teeny 1S stack, which is comprised of a 1S powered Omnibus F3 flight controller and a 4-in-1 6-amp ESC. It is BL Heli S, so it's capable of running one shot all the way up to D-Shot 600. Both boards can be ran at 8K. You just need to adjust some of the settings so that the CPU load stays under 35%. And I will show what needs to be tweaked in Betaflight a little bit later. Check out some of these different size flight controllers from 32mm all the way down to just 20mm. The BAT uses a 20mm board with 16mm mounting holes, which I think is the smallest brushless F3 board. 
You can see here I already have my receiver installed. The only other connection here is for the FPV setup which is on the right side of the board. There is also the buzzer but that's connected to the bottom side of the board. As for the ESC and power connections, this flight controller uses a 6 pin JST connector which does a nice job of keeping it nice and clean. The motors powering this micro are some 0705 bearing free brushless motors and they are rated at 15,000 kV. You can see a lot of motors having these high kV numbers because they really need to get their RPMs up in order to be able to produce sufficient power. Because motors don't have bearings, I've heard people complaining that they do get a little noisy, but there is a new version of this quadcopter out and the motors that it uses will have bearings. They are reported to be smoother and have an increase in power, so make sure you get the new one which should be the one with blue motors. Alright, so this is the battery that comes with this quad. Unfortunately, the connector that it uses kind of makes this battery proprietary. You can't really use other batteries unless you modify the connector. Plus, for most people and even hobbyists, they probably don't have, have a charging cable that matches up with this connector. It's just not very common. I didn't have one either so I decided to fab one up real quick. All I did was use the first two pins here and connect it to an XT60. For sure this is not the safest way. You definitely need to be cautious when plugging in to charge because you can very easily plug it in backwards and have a real mess on your hands. I've labeled my battery as an added precaution but still, you know, it always pays to double check. Alright, I'm just going to run through some of my Betaflight settings, show you guys uh, some of the things that I've changed. Earlier, I said the boards were able to run at 8K, 8K, but for some reason the CPU load has shot up to over 45%, so the PID loop will need to be lowered to 4K. For the other features section, I disabled everything except for OSD and air mode. There is no current sensor, so disable this. Here you can see that I am using a switch to ARM and that is set to auxiliary 1, which is channel 5. And then I have horizon set to position 2 of channel 6 and the buzzer to position 3 on the same switch. And finally, let's see how this thing flies. I'm going to start off with some line of sight footage and then move over to FPV. So I need to preface this by mentioning that the wind was blowing randomly. It was calm for a bit and then windy for a bit. You can definitely feel the gust influencing the way the bat flies. That's one of the drawbacks of having a 30 gram quadcopter. Here's a punch out. Not the most powerful. But then again you need to remember that it is just being powered by a 3.7 volt battery. So it's not going to be the most powerful which is especially evident when you're flying outdoors or in an open area. I guarantee that the quad will feel more powerful when flying indoors. I initially thought the bat was going to be like brush micros that I've previously tested but there really isn't a comparison. The bat definitely flies better and has more power which are going to be most notable when doing flips and rolls. By the way if anyone knows what is causing the beeping sound which occurs whenever I yaw please let me know. It's annoying as hell and I don't know how to turn it off. The frame's not as thick as I would have liked and the motors don't really have any protection but I've crashed a few times now and everything seems to hold up fine I guess when it comes to ultra lightweight micros flex it's not always a bad thing because these arms bend very easily on a single charge I got around four and a half minutes of flight time I was pretty heavy on the throttle the entire flight so this number will vary significantly depending on your flying style alright let's check out some FPV footage I think this was one of my first flights with the bat. I ended up removing the artificial horizon and sidebars because it was just too distracting. I was left with just the voltage, timer, and throttle as seen here on the bottom. 
When flying around obstacles, it feels like there is plenty of power. You can see my throttle usage was kept below 75% for most of this flight. Flight characteristics when flying in an open area and flying indoors or around obstacles can differ drastically. As I mentioned earlier, when flying at the park, the bat felt underpowered, but here in my backyard, it doesn't feel like that at all. In fact, you can see that I'm not even using the entire power band. The Bat 100 isn't the most powerful, and there are a few things that leave me scratching my head, but overall, it is a nice little quad. It's packed with all the features you would want. It's got a powerful flight controller, ESC, Betaflight OSD, a buzzer, just to name a few. I think this is the next step up from brushed toy grade quads. This makes a great stepping stone because it's not as intimidating as the bigger quads. This goes for both the pilot and those around you. You can crash into people with the bat and they'll probably laugh. Do that with a 5 incher and get ready for a lawsuit. The bottom line is the bat makes for a great entry into FPV racing. And with that being said, I'm going to stop here. Thanks very much for watching. See ya. <laughs>